Welcome to this third video on using the Behringer X-Touch 1 together with Cakewalk. In video 1 we updated the firmware to the latest version. In video 2 we had a look at all the settings inside the X-Touch and inside Cakewalk. And now it's time to have some fun. And in this video we are going to have a look what we can do, how it operates. The main feature, of course, of the X-Touch is this beautiful physical slider. If I touch it, it releases the servo. It's a motorized slider and I can now control the volume of track 1. If I click with the mouse on track 2, we see that the slider is suddenly moved to the position of the fader of track 2 and we can now control the volume of track 2. The, the slider is touch sensitive, the moment you touch it, it releases its servo and you can control the slider without any opposing force. We can also change tracks, uh, not by just clicking on the screen, but also here we have these channel buttons and they change track. And we also have fader bank buttons and those are meant to change 8 tracks in one step. I don't have, have enough tracks to demonstrate that, but if you have very um, a, a large amount of tracks, then the fader bank buttons are of help, of course. There's also a possibility to control the master volume, which is one of the buses over here. And for that we have this master button. And now, as we see, I control the volume of the master bus. That is, of course, quite convenient. And there's also a way to uh, reach these other buses over here. For that, we have to click two buttons, uh, the scrub button over here and one of the fader bank buttons over there. So let's do that, scrub and fader bank. And now we are again controlling uh, the bus. Uh, and if I go to channel right, uh, I control that other bus. Um, what is a little bit of an issue is that the highlight doesn't go with it. So you have to remember yourself where you are at this moment in time. To reach, uh, oh, by the way, it also shows here in the uh, display that we now are controlling buses. And look what happens if we go back to track control, uh, again press the scrub button and fader bank left. Then we can see over here that we are back to track control. And with the tracks uh, the highlight is available. If I change track we can see over here and also over there the highlight of the track is changing. Above the slider we have this rotating knob which controls track panning and as you see uh, on the screen we have 100 steps uh, it can go from 0 to 100 and also here with the knob it shows these uh, nice little LEDs that give a quick view of where approximately we are. A single press on the button brings us back to zero panning and then of course per track we, we have this nice LCD screen. It shows the name of the track so that you know with the multiple track recording what you are currently uh, controlling with the slider. The name is abbreviated. This uh, track has a long name called Feel Like Making Love by Bob James. And uh, it is automatically abbreviated over here. It only uses the first letter of every word. Fully automatic. I didn't have to do anything about that. The other eye catcher of the X-Touch is this large jog wheel and what it does it controls the marker on the timeline. So we can find exactly uh, the right spot and what the marker does it is the start position for the playback. The steps that it takes, this jog wheel is, is a stepping wheel, uh, that can be changed in the settings. I have currently set it to beats, uh, but you can also set it to bars and then it runs a little bit faster. 
There are also two buttons, the fast back and fast forward buttons that can also be used for moving the time marker around. And I have put those in the settings to uh, beats. Uh, so one click uh, increases or decreases it by one beat. But if you keep them pressed, they start running faster and faster. And yeah, you can scroll easily to a large amount of time on your timeline. Where we are on the timeline is displayed here on this nice display on the X-Touch. There are two modes for that, that is minutes and seconds or bars and beats. And we can change those modes, uh, look, look that it changes when I rotate the job wheel. We can change the mode by this BPM time button. Now it is on time mode, uh, but look what happened over here on the uh, cakewalk screen that did not change that is still on bars and beats so this makes it possible to have both of these time displays uh, available at the same time the first four buttons here on the transport section change the mode with which the backward and fast forward buttons work for instance if we press the marker button what happens then is that the time marker jumps from one marker to another. Uh, as you can see, I have created three markers, the intro, verse and chorus start points, and I can now quickly find them by using this marker mode. The second button is loop mode. Note that when I press it, it automatically deselected the marker mode. Let's do it again. Yeah, it, there can only be one of these four can be active. In loop mode, the fast forward and backward buttons control start and end of a loop. Well, let's show a loop over here. I have created a loop, these yellow markers. Note that also now the click button went on. Yeah, these names over here, they are not the correct names. Uh, apart from marker, that was correct, but the rest is not. But you have these overlay cartons that you can use to write down the correct functions. Uh, anyhow, if I click loop button over here, also this uh, click button uh, lights up and I can also start and stop uh, looping uh, by just using that button. Okay, let's have a look at what the uh, fast forward does now. It goes to the end of the loop and backward goes to the start of the loop, which can be convenient at some point. The third mode is selection mode. We don't have a selection yet, so let me quickly make a selection from the first four chords, for instance. And we see now here at the top this green selection uh, marker. And now the fast back and fast forward buttons go to the beginning and the end of the selection. It can also sometimes be quite convenient. The fourth of the special transport buttons is go back to zero. If it's activated, if you use one of the fast forward or fast backward buttons, you return to zero. Let me show that again a little bit further away. Press fast forward. Strangely enough, it returns to zero. There's another button that also quickly returns to zero, no matter what mode you are in, which is this final button in the row. It says solo, but these texts are uh, not the correct text. Solo brings me back to zero. There's one button we haven't discussed yet, which is the fifth in line, the replace button. If we activate that, then the jog wheel can control any knob or fader that we activate. So let me click with the mouse this uh, frequency knob and look what happens. I can change it with the jog wheel or press this gain knob. I can now change it with the jog wheel or press a fader over here and I can now control it with the jog wheel on the buses straight away without having to do this uh, two button touching. And I can also control this fader over here. Uh, no matter where you click, you can control it with the jog wheel. Let's go over here at the top row channel buttons. Uh, the channel that is currently selected 
uh, if I press the mute button, then, well, it does what it says. It mutes the solo button, solos, and the record arm button, arms recording mode. Then we have this row of function keys over here, and it was shown in the previous video how you can select the activity hidden under those keys and you can even change uh, presets uh, save them and restore them very quickly uh, what i did is uh, yeah well, some simple things like a function button for quickly opening the piano roll or the mixer uh, i can uh, hide or show the left sidebar or hide and show the right sidebar and then i have the um, quantize under one bot button if you are working with the piano roll and you would like to quantize quickly and then the final one with me is undo uh, it depends what your personal preferences are you can do anything you like with those buttons then we have the control the play play well that does what it says it starts to play the song and when I press play again, it pauses and we see that the time marker now uh, moved itself to where I pressed play again. And if I now again press play, it resumes from where it was. If I now press stop, it returns to where the time marker was the last time. Uh, and of course we can go back to zero by quickly pressing this solo button. So uh, the play uh, is actually a, a play and pause button and the stop button brings you back to the time marker. Well, and then of course we have the record button, which I'm not going to press right now. Oh, why not? Uh, it doesn't record anything because I did not arm anything. Um, but le well, let's create a third track, why not? And uh, just do it, insert a MIDI track. Uh, it is now active, so I can record something. Uh, let me click the record button over here. Yeah, it's now in recording mode. Let me click record and I should be able to play something. Yeah, that worked well. It, uh, it was <laughs> not according to the uh, song that played. But we see that this uh, yeah, all works. Then we have left these cursor buttons over here. The middle one is the zoom. And in this case, if I press the horizontal cursor buttons, it zooms in and out of the timeline. And the vertical ones, they change the height of the tracks. Can be convenient. Otherwise, if you deselect the zoom function, then what happens, yeah, it depends a bit on uh, where you are, but right now we can see that over here is my cursor and I can now change the cursor position. Well, is that handy? I don't think uh, very much because the mouse is quicker in this case. Anyhow, then the final button on this X-Touch is the scrub button. If I press it, probably my sound will go uh, awkward uh, because uh, I have a problem with my recording mode and the script mode. So I'm not going to touch it, but what it does is if you press it, it activates the, uh, the sound module in Cakewalk and then you can use the jog wheel uh, and at the same moment hear the sound uh, so that you can exactly pinpoint if you need to go to an exact location where that is unfortunately i cannot demonstrate it well this was it i think we covered every button and knob on the x touch um, and well i i like it very much it is quite a handy tool to use if you get used to what all the function knobs do and what all these transport knobs do you can quickly move around and mix and edit thank you for watching and maybe see you in a future video